today, Brother Marshall, God. We thank you, God. We thank you for him, for his testimony. And Lord, we ask you to just let everything that's said and done be done in that name that's above every name, in the name of Jesus. We thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, partners in prayer. Uh, 90 days of prayer for prodigals. I am very excited about our special guest today. And this is, uh, we are closing out the end of week five. Our subject this week was stretcher of faith. And last week we talked about the four friends that tore off the roof and brought the man that was paralyzed at the feet of Jesus. And that's what we have done for the last 35 days is we have brought our prodigals before the feet of Jesus. Praise the Lord. And so today I, I want to give just a brief, brief introduction. I'm Billy Jean Bishop with Partners in Prayer, and uh, we are uh, hosting Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. Central Time daily devotions uh, with different hosts, and some of them are sharing their testimony. And the day's devotion, we're utilizing a book by Dr. James Bank, Bank, excuse me. Um, 90 days of prayer for your child. So we're encouraging everybody to get involved, to join us. And uh, this, we're going to be starting week six, just say the word. So we're gonna go from stretcher of faith to just say the word. But every Friday on our Zoom calls, I do my best to find uh, someone and the Lord has been faithful and he's led me to someone every single Friday to share a testimony. And when Sister Benita Prince, Marshall's mom, gave a devotion this morning, um, Marshall so graciously at the last minute, <laughs> the last minute uh, agreed to share his testimony with us. And so what I would like to do is to give him plenty of time I'll let him introduce himself and tell us where he's from. And then after the testimony, we will go into today's devotion. So um, go ahead, Marshall, just tell us where you're from. Uh, and to give from you some around time. Jackson, Mississippi. Uh, you want me to just tell my testimony or? Yes, sir, just, just share your heart with us. The who, the what, the how. Mm -hmm. And, and where you are today. Well, the who, what, and how was Jesus, but here I am. <laughs> uh, I'm born and raised around Jackson, Mississippi. Got out of church at about 14, 15 years old. Had a lot of just pinned up bitterness. Uh, had a lot of animosity toward my parents. And just started going down a bad road at that age. And just one thing led to to another, you know, snowball effect that led to drugs and alcohol. And by the time I was 17, 18, I was dabbling in some pretty, pretty bad stuff. And uh, just went down a bad road of bitterness was the main thing. Moved out of my parents' house, moved all around Texas, Louisiana, Florida, Georgia, just all around the South, really ran from God all my life. Uh, didn't want to submit, didn't want to hear anything about God. I hated God. Didn't want to talk to him. Didn't want anything to do with him. But uh, it, it was kind of a, a slow journey. There was, I guess, milestones, you could say, that I didn't even know were happening while, while I was on my journey. <laughs> Uh, whether I wanted to or not, bitterness just kind of started shedding off of me. Like, I could feel it. it. It just wasn't as strong as it was the day before. And I would try to provoke myself and make myself angry for no reason day by day, but it just wouldn't be there like it would, you know, six months before. And, uh, and I would, I dealt with pain through drugs and alcohol. And it, Jesus just started healing me before I even came back to him, you know. Uh, and I'm sure that's through prayer from my family. Looking back now, that's definitely what it was. Uh, yeah, just ran for a long time. 
But to make a long story short, uh, I was living in Georgia and I had a job offer in Biloxi, Mississippi. So I was heading, this was about a year and a half, two years ago. So I was heading back to Biloxi. I didn't have a vehicle at the time. I was living out of a Greyhound bus. Uh, I was headed to Biloxi and I stopped by my dad's church on Father's Day weekend. This was, I think, a year, yeah, a year ago, or two, maybe two years ago. Anyway, uh, it happened to be Father's Day weekend, so I stopped by my dad's church for the first time since I was, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16, and uh, I ran into a guy there that owns a asphalt company, and we got to chatting and kind of caught up because I hadn't seen him in years. And he offered me a job. He said, if it didn't work out in Biloxi, to give him a call. And uh, so long story short, it didn't work out in Biloxi. So I went to Holly Springs and where he's located and got the job up there and worked for about close to a year. And he kept inviting me to church. And uh, so finally I went to church and got the Holy Ghost on a Sunday night, prayed through, and I've been going to Bethlehem Church ever since. Just really plugged in and planted my feet. I got tired of running. But that's the short version of it. Praise the Lord. That's incredible. Marshall, tell us a little bit about um, your parents' role in your restoration and some, some of possibly some of the prayers you prayed, uh, some of the thoughts you had during this journey. Well, I didn't really pray, pray any prayers, to be honest with you. Anytime I would speak to God, it was just hatred. So uh, all the prayers that were prayed was my family. And your mom and dad are ministers? Yes, ma'am. How did, how did it feel <laughs> to be not only reunited back to the family of God, but um, this, describe to us a little bit about your, your family and, and how they responded. You were not at their church, right? No. You prayed it. Mm -hmm. uh, it was weird. Took a lot of pride breaking to, you know, just almost like trying to convince yourself that you're right for so long and then you get proved wrong. You don't really want to admit to it. So it's it's still kind of weird in that sense. But, you know, sticking close to Jesus and makes all things possible. So you were, you were 15 years old when you walked away from church. Um, yeah. How old were you when you received the Holy Ghost? I think I was seven. So my mom seven. Was seven. Mm -hmm. You're about the same age as my son. Um, so am I hearing you correctly that it, it took overcoming some pride to come back? A lot. A lot. A lot of overcoming pride. How did God convince you? What? I'm, I mean, talk about maybe just a couple of things that happened that that made you realize, you know, that maybe you're you're not right and you're not as tough as you think you are. Uh, I'm still trying to convince myself of that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's really just you kind of have to weigh out the cost and see which one's more worth it, breaking your pride or being broken all the time, you know? Yeah. You, you choose one or the other. Uh, I got sick of the lifestyle that I was living and just – being drunk and high all the time didn't, I had no identity. I didn't know who I was anymore. I'd, I'd wake up and feel a certain way this day or wake up the next day and feel a whole different way. And it took, I had to be high all the time. I had to have something in my system to, to face the day, you know. I didn't want to face reality. And my reality was I was insecure with myself 
I didn't like who I was. I didn't like who I was raised to be. I didn't like being raised in an apostolic home. I was ashamed of it. So I would get drunk and high all the time to mask it. Or I'd just cover it up with anger and hatred. I pumped myself full of anger and hatred. Um, but yeah, it took a lot of pride breaking. That's that was probably the first three months that I came back to God was really, really tough because I had to constantly, constantly tell myself, stick with it, stick with it, stick with it. No matter what anybody says, just stick with it, break your pride because I was so sick of how life was before. I, I just, I had to daily convince myself that it's worth it. And I know that that sounds kind of bad because you hear all these other testimonies of people coming to God and they're like, oh, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, I never look back, but I look back every day. Yeah. And I, I still have to convince myself it's not worth it. It's a journey, Marshall, and there, it's a restoration, a journey of restoration. But I, I love what you said. I'd rather my pride be broken than to be broken. Yeah. Uh, that is, is a powerful revelation and understanding about yourself and about God. That's great faith. And I'm sure that the prayers of your friends and mom and dad and this pastor that kept after you, inviting you to church, that um, they they could see that. They could see, I, I know prodigals that I know they, they still have a love for God, but they really have a hatred for church culture. apostolic faith. They have a hatred for it. They reject it. They don't want to look like apostolics. And um, I, I, there were times where I, I felt like that, that young people like that were unreachable, but that is so far, so far from the truth. You said a key word mask. It's a mask. And I know that there, we have a real enemy. Uh, we have an enemy that will talk to us. You said that you had to decide that you're going to live for God daily. Mm -hmm. And that, that is, that is so encouraging because if we're going to help backsliders live for God and walk through restoration, we've got to realize that, that them coming to the altar and praying through is not the end. It's not the end. Yeah. So what are your dreams and hopes now, uh, going forward just stay close to god and do whatever he wants me to do just obey him i spent enough time disobeying so my goal now is just to quit being stubborn and prideful and submit well, I think we could all say that i think that we all want to be self-sufficient and not say that we need uh, someone and um, overcoming those um, prideful thoughts is is not an easy journey because it's a battle of the flesh every day. I really appreciate Marshall. It took great courage for you to come on a Zoom call and say that I was a, a prideful man and that I would rather have my pride broken than to remain broken. That is that is powerful i'm going to pray those words over some of my backsliders that i'm praying for that they realize that that god is not trying to break us he's not trying to destroy us but we have a just we have an enemy that's trying to destroy us how do your friends respond to you coming back to the lord marshall did you lose friends are you reaching for your friends what's that look like the friends i lost really god kind of put out of my life before I came back to God because he knew which I mean God is all knowing and all sovereign so he he saw the big picture he saw me in church over here and he saw where I was right here and he said okay I gotta get these people out of his life before it gets to here so they don't bash him and shame him so along in here he put these people out of my life so I wouldn't have to deal with it over here you see what I'm saying yes yes all the people that would have been you know judgmental mm -hmm. or harsh toward me making a softy decision yeah i hung around a lot of hard people you know drug dealers and thugs and murderers 
those were some of the people that I hung out with every day. And I would have had a lot of negative feedback from them if I was still in that circle with them at this point. So he, God kind of just got that out of the way for me before I even had to worry about it. Yesterday, we prayed for our backsliders friends. We, I challenged all of the, the group. We challenged everybody to find the names of your backsliders friends because there's, you know, we have, we all have friends that are close that we will listen to. Um, and so we've kind of shift our focus and I encourage everybody that's watching online, that's listening. Um, do you know the name of your, your son or daughter's best friend? Who, who do they trust? And um, so I know God gives us new friends and a support system, Marshall. And, and I still have a lot of old friends that I'm still very close with and I pray for them every day and I try my best to minister to them. Yes. And I'll never stop being a friend because they've been a loyal friend to me for years. I don't care what kind of mess that they were in, you know. Right. I was in the same mess with them. So I think that uh, not that they deserve salvation, but they need it just as much as I do. Absolutely. That's beautiful, Marshall. I, I love your spirit. Brother Bishop, we got about three minutes, four minutes to talk to Marshall. Uh, do you have yeah. any, any comments? I just wanted to ask him, I know he's aware of the uh, story of the prodigal son uh, or, or the wayward son, as the Bible calls him, who uh, wasted his inheritance with riotous living. But um, do you sometimes feel uh, like that prodigal son? And then this is what I wanted to ask you is when that prodigal son that it names in Matthew chapter 15, when he came to himself, did you feel like you had to uh, come to yourself and, and say, look, I need to get out of this because if I don't, it's not going to be good. I, I really came to myself about a year before I came to God, but it took that long to, for me to convince my pride to walk into a church. You know, I, I knew that I needed to get right. And I, I had a come to myself meeting long before I came to God, but it took that long for mm -hmm. me to break enough of my pride to actually walk back and let God break the rest of my pride. Well, the Mark, Lord sure knows how to, I was going to say the Lord sure knows how to do that, but yeah. And, and we always talk about how the father and how the scripture says how the father was looking afar off. Yeah. And, he said, you know, to place the uh, robe and the ring and kill the fatted calf and all that kind of stuff when his son came home. Because he said, you know, this my son was dead and now is alive. Um, how glad were your parents to see you come to God? I, I, I mean, I, I can only imagine. Very glad. But that I didn't receive that too well. I was like I said, a pride issue. It wasn't very easy for me to, because most of my life I tried to make them disappointed in me. And so making them proud of me was hard to deal with. Mm. It was, that was a very humbling thing that I had to, to get through. Yes. Uh, when you go from trying to be somebody's enemy to being their hope, it's a, it's a big change. And, uh, God really, really dealt with me on that. I had to look at my parents through a different scope, a different lens. Yeah. I don't, I don't see them near the same as I used to. Praise uh, the Lord. The um, Bible uh, kind of says it this way, but whenever Lazarus came back from the dead, Jesus didn't say, come here and I'm going to unwrap your grave clothes. He told the people to. And yeah. we as people of God, and as children of God, we've got to unwrap the, gra the, the uh, grave clothes off of our children. And my wife says it all the time, you know, because when we're out in the world, we're lost. We are out there and uh, we have no hope. But it's the prayers of your parents, Marshall, that kept you. And I know you know that now and you're probably still just learning that. But it's the prayers of people that you knew even as a young child, your grandparents probably or, you know, other friends or other family that kept you 
going. Our prayers live perpetually in the heavens and God doesn't forget them. And so when you came back to God, it was just an answer to all of those prayers. And, yeah. and I know I'm talking to a man today. It's very thankful for those prayers. Yeah. 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 Without a doubt. Marshall, talk to the backslider in closing out your testimony. We're going yeah. to, we're going to remain on and, and give our devotion today, but um, I know your time is short, but talk to the backslider. Uh, if there's one thing I could tell them, don't be prideful. Don't uh, don't hold a grudge. I don't care what you're doing. Stay away from being prideful and holding grudges. The father didn't come to the pig pen and drag the prodigal out. The prodigal had to get up and break his own pride before he could go back to the father's house and let the father break his pride even more. So mm -hmm. the first step is with you. You got to make that, you got to reach out to make the connection. It's beautiful. I'd rather have my pride broken than to be broken. That is, uh, that's what I'm going to remember from the takeaway from this. Marshall, may the Lord bless you. May he continue to use you. May God give you the souls of the, your friends that you love and care about. May there be a turning around and they will see you. Uh, they're probably glad you stepped away from harm's way. And deep down, they, they, there's a hunger. I believe there's a God hunger in the earth like never before. And God is doing a quick work. We pray blessings on you. Let's all pray blessings on Marshall. And then we're going to finish out our devotion today. Lord, I pray for this young it man. God. Today, I pray God. you surround we him and minister to him. Task, oh God. That the or blessings of the Lord yes, would follow Lord. him. God, that the joy yes, of the Lord God. would continue yes. to be. Let the joy God. of the Lord be his God, strength. give him, Lord, friends, Lord. Thank you, God. Win to you, Lord. Lord, just minister and grant him be his calling his far, his oh God. Heart, Lord. I thank you. Hallelujah. I praise thank you for Lord. this young man. As you forgave him, Lord. let him, God. Let it reach a hurting heart. Thank let it reach you, someone, Lord, that needs let to him be long, God, to be towards the Father's God, house. Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I thank you for it, Lord. To be what you I thank you, him. Lord God. Bless him, Lord. Bless him on his job. Bless him, Lord Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. In every Hallelujah. area of his life, thank Lord. You, Lord. In Jesus' name. Give strength day by day, God. In Jesus' thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Marshall, thank you. Thank you. Maybe in the spring we can, we can have you back and you can share some more good things from us. Thank you for uh, taking time out of your busy day. Uh, God bless you and your family. Yes, ma'am. Thank you all. God bless. Yeah, All right. You too. Bless you, brother. Thank you, sir. We are on day 35. And um, for those of you that are following us in the book, uh, I encourage you to spend some time. I have found it very challenging to, to carve out time to, uh, to pray the prayers. I pray them while we're leading, and I'm, I'm just confessing you to you today. But there is nothing like getting into the word and open your paper Bible and to um, to to look at what is being taught today's focus. And this next week is is called Lord, just speak the word. And it talks about the centurion. And I encourage you tomorrow morning, grab you a cup, cup of coffee, cup of tea, whatever, and spend some time with the Lord. Um, and today I'm just going to give a short synopsis of the lesson. Uh, Sister Long has written out uh, a great highlight of today's devotion, and I'm just going to read it. It's posted on my page, day 35. And the scripture is found in Luke chapter 19, verses 41 through 42. And this is in the New Literal Translation. As he approached Jerusalem, this is Jesus, he saw the city. He wept over it and said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Jesus wept over Jerusalem. And I do believe that, that Jesus sees our backsliders. He saw Marshall where he was at. He knew what he had to overcome to come back to the father's house. But Jesus wept over 
Jerusalem. And the whole focus on today's uh, devotion is about the Lord has uh, empathy. He knows how we feel about our backsliders being away from God. He knows, he sees their struggle. He saw Marshall. He saw all these young men that we've been sharing testimony, Michael Kennedy, and um, that we've been trying to bring testimonies to you so that you could take and identify, identify with uh, your backslider situation and condition that they're in. But I want to assure you today, Jesus sees them. He knows how to communicate with them. And Sister Long goes to stay praised because you've been there. That's the subject of today's devotion. And I just read the scripture to you. The scripture, she says, is powerful concerning the rebellious children of God. You know, they're still children of God. They're still covenant children. They're still, still covered by the blood of Jesus. But they're rebellious children. And the peace that they could have known. Jesus looks at them and says, I have peace that you know not of. I have rest for you. I have blessings for you. And Jesus wept over the city and our heavenly father does weep and he, we can grieve his heart by our disobedience. He knows, Jesus knows, now listen, he knows the agony, the pain and the longing that you and I experience with our beloved prodigals. He knows it. He understands the roller coaster of having rebellious children. He said that he longed to gather his children together, together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but they were not willing. Have you ever tried to gather and, and uh, up children or animals that were not willing to be gathered together? And Jesus sees that. He, he says that we weep at times as Jesus wept and we must never, ever lose hope. We must pray with faith that the scales that are going to be removed from their eyes and that light will return. That's what happened to Marshall. The scales come out. He saw himself as he was. He came to himself, he said, a year before he ever came to church. And you notice in his testimony that he didn't come even to the altar of his mom and his dad's church, but God used another man. God will use any means and any way and any man or woman that is walking with the Lord to reach our back sliders because he knows them he longs for them we must believe that and fully trust jesus again that they will experience their day of salvation and the scripture theme for all of last week was my child your sins are forgiven your sins are forgiven praise the lord uh, brother bishop do you want to introduce any of um, next week? I'll give you a minute, just say the word. But before Brother Bishop introduces next week, I just want to pray the prayer that I don't always do this, but I, 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 mean, I want to encourage you. God has given us this incredible tool. It's full of the word of God. And um, Lord, let me pray the prayer in the book. God, you have a wonderful world full of prodigal children and lord you love them so much you gave your life for them lord we praise you we praise you that you have come lord you've sent your son into the world not to condemn the world could i say that jesus has come not to condemn the backslider but to bring all men to repentance that, that he can save them through him and we thank you, Lord God, for not looking on our son, our daughter with condemnation, but with love. Hasn't that been the theme in this fall 2022? By love. He will reach them by his love. You long even more than I long for them to come to you. You long for the people of Jerusalem. Lord, you wept over Jerusalem. And Lord, you see my tears that I weep for my backslider. Lord, I pray, God, that you would bring them to the depths of love and understanding 
that you truly love them. My prayer is that God will help my sons and daughters and my granddaughter understand that you love them personally. It's not it's, it's not just about a God that sits in the heavens and, and is angry with us when we sin. We're talking about a heavenly father, the greatest father, the greatest love of a father, everything that needs to be given and shared to our backsliders come from the father. He is the heavenly father. He weeps over them. He cares for them. He longs for them. And when you realize, when you think about it, I want you to stop a minute and think about how much God loves your child. You love them, but God loves them. He sees the end from the beginning. So I pray, Lord God, that my precious prodigal will love you, will love you for your sake and for his. And may, I may add that the, that the Lord, that you will have great communion, close connection with my backslider. I pray that he will understand that now is the time. Lord, move on them. And if, and if you're a backslider and you're listening, or you need a renewal of fresh faith. Marshall said he fought daily, daily to not go back, to change his mind about being back at the house of God. The enemy's going to fight you. But to realize that now is the time. Now is the day of salvation. And um, that he would, she would give their heart fully to you. Brother Bishop, do you have anything about introducing? And then we're going to go into a time of prayer introducing um, yeah. this yes. week week six week yes six. hallelujah uh, for those of you listening and thank you for listening today by the way of facebook live and this is being recorded i thank the lord for the opportunity today to talk about week six it's called just say the word um i i'd like to read those scriptures if i could if that's okay today we got just a few moments Faith, faith, hallelujah. God's looking for people of faith today. We talked about it on our 6 a.m. prayer call. Faith can move mountains. The gift of faith, as our good friend, Pastor Dennis Lewis said today, ha is different from faith. There's faith. <laughs> Somebody needs to mute their line. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. But Matthew chapter five or chapter eight, verses five to 13 goes like this. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the, pal uh, the, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus, Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. Jesus said he would come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. What was Jesus talking about? And Jesus said unto the, unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. Hallelujah. In that self same hour. He was healed that very hour. And you know what I believe also? He was not only healed, but he was made whole. Praise the Lord. I think it's, it's amazing, but there's only two incidents in scripture. And I want somebody to hear this this morning where Jesus was described as being astonished or amazed. This was one of them where he said, I have not seen such great faith in all Israel. He said, be it unto you. And the other one was in Mark 
6 and 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief and went about the villages teaching. So there's faith and there's unbelief. There's faith and there's no faith. Hallelujah. But both incidents that Jesus was amazed or astonished. Only twice in the scripture where it said that he was amazed or astonished. Both of those incidents had to do with faith. Oh, what kind of faith do we have today? Do we have a faith that can move mountains? Do we have faith knowing that he's already there? The lesson from today, day 35, is praise him because you've been there. And he's there before we ever get there. Did you know that God's already on the scene before you even mention your situation when you're in that time of prayer? God's already there. He said, we ask, we have not because we ask not. And I wonder if there's somebody on, the, on, on this call today that's listening maybe by the way of Facebook Live right now that maybe you've been asking or seeking something, but you have not because you have asked not. Maybe your faith wasn't high enough. Oh, maybe you've even thought to yourself, and this just came to my mind just now. Well, maybe the Lord's just not interested in doing that little thing. It, it's really not that big of a deal to God. Oh, trust me today, it's big. God, as our good friend, Diane Long, and we just love this sweet couple, Don and Diane Long, over the Prodigals Ministry at the Pentecostals of Alexandria, great friends of ours, and we just love and cherish them. Sister Diane says that God is in the details. And I want to hear, and I, I want to hear his voice when he's talking to me. But I want someone to hear my voice today and know that God is with you, that God hears you when you speak to him. And when you're crying out from the depths of your heart, even though you may not speak those words out, and even though you feel insignificant, and, and Lord, I'm too small for you to do something like that. No, no, no. Have faith today. Just say the word. We were speaking to a lady this morning on our 6 a.m. call, and she just needed healing in her shoulder, her a rotator cuff, she said. She couldn't hardly lift her, her arm. And as you can see now, if you're looking, hallelujah, God is, has given me great movement in my arms. And I thank him for that. But even a couple of years ago, God touched me in my shoulders. Both of my shoulders, I've had to have steroid shots in my shoulders because of such pain. And you can even ask my wife in the last several years, every six months, I was getting steroid shots in either one shoulder or the other. And for six months, my shoulders felt great. But I'm here to declare to somebody that God's a healer and that he just had to speak the word. And I just began to, to just speak that word. And now here I am a year, two years later, and I have no pain in my shoulders right now. I have no pain. I'm able to lift my hands to the Lord and praise him because I decided, just as that good brother just spoke a few minutes ago, I decided to speak life, hallelujah, instead of uh, speaking negativism. We just got to say the word sometimes. We just got to say the word. That's what week six is all about. Just say the word. Oh, hallelujah. And I got a question for you. So here's the question in closing today. And wouldn't you love, and this is what it says in the books written by Dr. James Banks on page 101, the last sentence in that week, next week is, and wouldn't you love to amaze Jesus? Wouldn't you love to amaze him? I want to amaze him, but not just with, with um, the obedience that I have toward him or just because of the fact that I love him. I want to obey him, and I want to amaze him with my faith. Faith mm -hmm. cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Oh, I wonder if we could speak faith today. I'm going to hand this back to my wife, but God bless you for being on our broadcast today. I thank God that we're able to speak things that are not as though they already are. Sometimes you just gotta speak the word. Sometimes we just have to speak the word. Lord, I'm healed. I know God, uh, some people have that mentality. There used to be somebody used to say a long time ago, oh, that's that, gla uh, that's that uh, uh, grab it and blab it uh, mentality. That's that uh, name it and claim it mentality. No, we're, we're not grab it and blab. We're not name it and claim it. We have faith that what we speak, God is going to do. My son, both of my sons are going to live for God. Hallelujah. Both of my 
um, children, for my grandchildren that live right here in my hometown, they're going to live for God one day because I'm going to speak forth that word and yes. God's going to do the work in okay. Jesus name. God bless you today. Just say the word. Yes. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'm going to hand it back to my sweet wife, Billie Jean. So there's some key points here today on day 35, starting week six. Um, I'm just going to remind us, for those of you that are just jumping on, praise the Lord, that Marshall testified that he needed to lose his pride. He said he would rather be uh, his pride be broken than to be broken. And when he realized that he was broken and that he needed mended, he needed the heart mender. And isn't Jesus the best heart mender? He knows our backsliders better than we do. And so just, just relax. Not be, don't be inactive because we're in a war. We're in a fierce war. We're fighting on their behalf. So when we pray, we're activating. It's a door. There's doors that need to be opened for our prodigals to walk through. Um, there are, who was it, Brother Bishop, that just said that, that every prayer is a brick laid for them to walk uh, closer to the Lord. Every prayer. Yeah, yeah, that was Brother Anthony laid. last week. Yes, Brother Anthony. yes oh, Anthony Sams. Yeah. So we have brought to you four young men that, that are all very different in personalities. Their stories are very different. Not every backslider that comes back is going to be a preacher of the gospel, but they are going to share the good news of their restoration. So love them, uh, encourage them, pray for them, but open the doors. Jesus is the door. The way that you activate faith and you open doors for your backslider to come home is praying the word. So that's why this book and us coming together on a Zoom call on a busy Friday, we can activate our faith. We can open up those doors so that they can uh, come out. They can come out. Many of them are bound by, by drugs or alcohol, um, by um, pride, um, by discouragement, disillusionment, shame, whatever. This, this journey that we're taking in 90 days of prayer, we're going to strip those grave clothes off them. But we are the only person, and I say this in love, okay? We are the only person that we can change. We can influence our backsliders by loving them. Have you hugged your prodigal today? If they're in your town, if they're near you, just, just give them a big hug. And they, they may say, mom, what was that for? Dad, what was that for? Some of us dads, uh, some of you fathers haven't hugged your, your, your children in a long time. I don't care how old they are. Hug them, hug them, pull them up close. And if you're having a hard time hugging, pray till you can hug them. <laughs> pray till you can look them in the face and just say, oh, there's no special reason why I'm hugging you. I just want you to know I love you. The Lord is, is moving upon them. He's, he's endeavoring to help them. So hug your prodigal today. Know that they're on a journey. It's very personal, but you can help them on that journey. You can help them. So Brother Bishop, we're going to pray. In closing, we're, we've got just a few minutes. Every time we gather together on Zoom or on a prayer call, it's not the same. Today's very subdued. It, it's a very um, thought-provoking time. I want you just to think about what's being said. I want you to, to take hold of faith. Amaze God, Brother Bishop said. Let's amaze God. Let's amaze God with our great faith. Faith is trust. And trust is, is waiting. Trust is not leaning to your own understanding. God loves your prodigal more than you do. He longs for them. He's reaching for them. He wept over Jerusalem and he weeps over our children's rebellion. And But let's never be a stumbling block for our backslider. Let them come. Let it be personal between them and God and just stay on your knees. Praise God. Use the weapon of praise. Use the weapon of worship. Be faithful to the house of God. They're watching you, mom. They're watching you, dad. Be faithful. Keep your faith alive. Keep it active and keep your prayers going up before the Lord. So, Brother Bishop, let's, let's pray. Let's pray. 
Hallelujah. Lord, you said in your word in Ephesians 3 and 20, which is also in this lesson. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all of that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God, you said that in your word. Lord, we trust you today, God. Your word is life, God. Hallelujah. Your word is forever settled in heaven. It's a lamp to our feet. We are walking and it's a light to our path today. And God, we are walking toward that light. We know that you just got to speak the word, Lord, and it shall be done. We thank you, Lord, for us being able to speak the words of life today to someone, Lord. And if not just to ourselves, but Lord, we have to encourage ourselves like David used to in the Lord. We've got to encourage ourselves and just speak forth the word. Just say the word. Hallelujah. Help us, God, to do this today and every day. Help us to speak the words of life. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. You said it in your word. But we don't want to speak death. We want to speak life today. Proclaim your word. Trust your word. Believe your word. Activate your word. And see you do the impossible. Hallelujah. We know, God, that you're able to do all things. And we're able to do all things through you. You said in Ephesians 4 and 13. Or I'm sorry, in, in uh, Philippians 4 and 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. We can do all things. Yes. Thank you, Lord, for the faith that's in your word today. Thank you, God, for the glory that we feel around us today. It's your glory we feel, God. It's like a glory cloud that hovers over us because your presence is there. And in your presence, God, there's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there's pleasures forevermore. We thank you today. Thank you for our guest, Lord. I pray your blessings upon his life, his ministry, God. Thank you, Lord, for all these sweet people that are listening via Facebook Live right now. Lord, we need to just, hallelujah, say the word. Just say the word. We're asking you today to say the word, but Lord, we're going to speak it forth. Things that are not as though they are today. We're believing that the impossible will be made possible today, but it's only by your spoken word. In our faith in your spoken word today, God. We believe it today. We trust you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Bishop, I just want to encourage you that if you don't have backsliders in your family, that there's backsliders in your city. There's backsliders in your church. Come alongside of someone in your church and say, I'm going to be your prayer partner. I'm going to pray until your prodigal returns we're going to speak the word send them an encouraging message uh, send them uh, invitation to our zoom calls uh, tell them about our 9 a.m monday through thursday devotion those devotions are done by different hosts the, the people have taken time out to invest in your faith we have come together we're better together and just remember the lord is doing this he wept over jerusalem he weeps over our prodigals so who can you encourage today brother bishop and i we encourage ourselves up many times it's he's going to come he's going to come around <laughs> that we say that a lot he's going to come around he's going to realize and we just keep showing love and we keep reaching and we're going to have a lesson before the 90 days is up about enabling our backsliders um, if you've ever heard the word enabling, sometimes we want to give them a hand up, but not a hand out. We don't want to enable them to continue to do, uh, to be rebellious, to cause havoc in our homes. And I know there's a fine line. We're, we'll talk about that. Yesterday, we talked about their friends. Um, this weekend, just kind of give you, uh, uh, let's see, yes, tomorrow is day 36 in our book. I've got lots of notes. You can't see it. <laughs> that Maybe you can, but it's called For Chains to Fall. Are uh, any of your backsliders have chains on them? God wants to tear those chains off. You can do that. You may have to push aside a meal. If nothing's happening in your backsliders that you can uh, determine and see, it just feels like everything is a stalemate. It may be time to push back the plate and fast for them. Set aside a day and fast. And um, I appreciate Brother Bishop. We need you fathers. We need you. We need you loving our backsliders. 
We need our men of God involved in this sovereign move of God across the, the world, calling the backsliders home. So uh, um, I'm looking at Facebook. Sister Teresa Teresita, I'll, I will message you. Um, but just to give you, the book is called um, Prayers for Prodigals, 90 Days of Prayer for Your Child. Uh, I guess I'll just show it on the camera. I don't know if you can see that, but you can go to amazon.com or you can go to Thrift Books. The author of the book is uh, Dr. James Banks. We don't always go word for word in our devotion. Today, we've taken time to go slowly through the devotion because I want you to take hold of this. The, nobody's going to reach your backslider like you are. We're going to do this together and we're going to pray together, but you know them. You know that. You know his his heart, her heart, you know, their mannerisms, their personality. Sometimes they may perplex you and you don't know what to do, but pray for them, love them. And if you know someone that has a powerful testimony, I would like to host them on Fridays. We're building faith. We're building faith. Praise the Lord. So if, if you know of a backslider that has returned and has a powerful testimony, um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to hear about an elder. She's in her 70s, and she was gone from the Lord 26 years. Can God save our aged backsliders? Absolutely. Absolutely. Sister Kathy testifies that her daughter was gone just six months, and God interceded in her life. It doesn't matter how long they're gone. God loves them and he's reaching for them. Won't you reach for them with us? And if you're a backslider, I just want to encourage you. If you're a backslider, we're waiting for you. We're not going to judge you. We're not going to uh, look down on you. We are going to help you. We're here to help you. Praise God. All right, Brother Bishop. Any, any Praise final Lord, I just want to, yeah, I, um, it's weird. I was just looking in the book. <laughs> on today's devotion on actually next week's devotion faith we were talking about faith and the measure of faith jesus spoke to a gentile man this was the centurion and he said he had never seen such great faith he said he was a man under authority said to a servant do this and they did it but something happened that we just got to not miss today. You see, this man, he was supposed to do one thing, but he ended up doing a, uh, a completely different thing. So instead of doing what he originally said he would do, Jesus said what the man believed he could do. Did you catch that? Instead of doing what he thought he could do, he believed that Jesus for what he could do. And Matthew writes that his servant was healed that very hour, Matthew 8 and 13. So sometimes we come into a situation believing, what do you believe that Jesus can do for your prodigal son or daughter? And the author goes on to say right now, and I'm not trying to belabor the point, and we've got to go because it's almost five till the hour, but somebody needs to hear this right now. It's easy to become discouraged and allow our circumstances to shape our faith. I like the way he said that. Mm -hmm. Our circumstances, can your circumstances shape your faith today? Mm -hmm. They can. Mm -hmm. They can shape it. They can make it into something that you don't even want it to be. So we've got to allow our circumstances to shape our faith in the positive way and not the negative. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. We've got to cleave to the good today. Amen. But what if we take the centurion's experience of Jesus to heart? What if we believe all the more in the greatness and power? of our great savior jesus christ just a word from him can make everything better it's like that old song just a little talk with jesus makes it right hallelujah but what if we trust jesus more and believe that he's able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine like i just said in ephesians 3 and 20 hallelujah so are you going to be able to speak it forth today just speak the word Speak yes. home your, your son and your daughter that might be not where they are supposed to be right now with the Lord. You're lost. 
loved one, your brother, your sister. Uh, this applies to everybody. It doesn't have to be your son or daughter. It could be your sibling. It could be your niece, your nephew, a grandfather, a grandmother, yeah. or, or just an old friend that lives down the street. Yeah. Hallelujah. We've got to have that kind of faith today. I've got faith that people, I've ran into two people in the last few days that used to attend or that know about our old church, Mount Zion, from many, many years ago that later became a different name and now a different name. Church has changed names over the years, but the experience is still real. Pentecost is still real. Amen. The power of God is still real to deliver today. Hallelujah. So Lord, we just say today, just say the word, God. Just say the word. Restore our faith. Restore our faith. Hallelujah. One man in the word said, hallelujah, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope this is helping somebody. If not, it's helping me today. <laughs> Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. Hallelujah. We, we gave a testimony of how there was a faith preacher came to our church many years ago and how he spoke the word of faith. And during the night, hallelujah, person with the arm that it couldn't raise above their head. During the middle of the night, the Lord said, you're healed. Move your arm. And in just a moment's time, they heard a little cracking, a little crunching in the bone or whatever in that shoulder. And all of a sudden, they moved their arm freely. And they began to praise the Lord because the word was spoken by the God who cannot fail. <laughs> oh, my friend, he can do immeasurably more immeasurably more than you can even ask or think today hallelujah thank you lord hallelujah. thank you for those who've joined us on zoom um we will be opening up um some time after the facebook live um next week we're going to have some special prayer time uh all right those of you who have never joined us on the conference line to pray i can send you the schedule we have 18 hours 18 hours of prayer. Uh, we take your prayer request. We pray with you. You can join other apostolics and pray. If you have been on our prayer conference line, won't you invite a guest? Don't keep this to yourself. Dial in. Uh, just message me, Billy Jean Bishop or Stephen Bishop, and we'll send you the schedule and you can join us in prayer. Uh, those of you that are in the 90 days of prayer journey, we do a devotion with different hosts every Monday through Thursday at nine o'clock. Please share those videos. We know that people are watching and listening to those videos. Get the word out. If you believe that God is bringing the backslider home, would you share the good news? Will you share the encouragement? So thank you, Brother Bishop, and all of you that are on the Zoom call, all of you that are Facebook Live. I will go back and answer questions. I see you making comments on Facebook, and um, I'll be sure to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. God bless all of you today. Be sure to read your, your devotion for the weekend and spend some special time with the Lord and believing God is bringing your backslider home. God bless.